بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم آئی ایم غزالہ امین اینڈ آئی ول بی دا انسٹرکٹو فار پی آر ایم سیون ہنڈریڈ اٹ از ایڈوانس پروجیکٹ مینجمنٹ کلاس فار اے گریجویٹ لیول کورس ایم ایس ان پروجیکٹ مینجمنٹ بہت ہائپڈ اپ کورس ہے دیر از اے لاٹ آف ڈیمانڈ آف پروجیکٹ مینجمنٹ ان دا انڈسٹری رائٹ ناؤ ہم لوگوں کا کامسیٹس یونیورسٹی بھی اس کو آفر کر رہی ہے اور الحمد للہ ورچوئل کیمپس فار کامسیٹس از آلسو ڈسائڈیڈ ٹو آفر دس پروگرام اٹس اے ویری کمپٹیٹیو پروگرام آئی ریپیٹ مائی سیلف اور بہت ڈیمانڈ ہے اس وقت انڈسٹری میں پروجیکٹ مینجمنٹ کی اینڈ اٹ ووڈ بی ونڈرفل دیٹ وی ول بی ایبل ٹو ڈیلیور اینڈ ایکچولی امپارٹ اے لاٹ آف ایجوکیشن ان دس ایریا اور ہم لوگ ان شاء اللہ بہت اچھے پروفیشنلز ڈیلیور کریں گے تھرو دس پروگرام سو ایم کائنڈ آف لوکنگ فارورڈ ٹو ٹیچنگ دس کورس یو ول ہیو پلینٹی مور اپرچونیٹی ٹو لرن اباؤٹ دس ان ویلیوبل انفارمیشن اور ان ویلیوبل سورس آف انفارمیشن ان دا فیلڈ آف پروجیکٹ مینجمنٹ سو لیٹ اسٹارٹ آئی ول اسٹارٹ آف وتھ مائی اون پروفائل پروفائل فار مائی سیلف دیٹ از واٹ یو آر سیئنگ آن Uh, in the background right now. Profile of myself, I am currently the in charge of MSN project management program within the Department of Management Sciences. I joined ComSats in 2009 as an assistant professor. Thora sa mera apna educational background kya hoga? Wo bhi batati chalu. It's a, I am a PMP, which is a project management professional. PMP is industry accreditation For, from an institute called PMI, Project Management Institute. It's a USA-based uh, institute. But at this time, it's a lot of recognized. Hai. Uh, there's a lot of potential for PMP professionals uh, within not only just the Europe and the Americas, but also in the Middle East. And this trend from the past five months, five, six years, se, I'm sorry, uh, has taken over the project management industry or corporate sectors in Pakistan also. And now when it's increasing, NGOs have started requiring a lot of PMP professionals also. And I'll talk about why project management professionals are in such demand. But in 2001, I was one of the very first ones. If you look at Pakistan history for PMPs, but I was in USA at that point in time. But I became a PMP in 2001. Uh, proceeding, progressing from that particular, particular certification, um, I became IBM Certified Senior Program Manager. At that point in time, I was working for IBM. I will share my working experience with you in the follow-on slides so that you know what the history of project manager has progressed. And I'm extremely fortunate that I was, I think, part of that history in making. Uh, not only an IBM certified senior program manager, I am also certified information specialist from um, an, an organization called EDS, Electronic Data System, but it is now acquired by Hewlett Packard. I have received all my education from USA. I was in high school when I left, so Zadatar jo padhai, educational jo high school ke baad padhai hoti hai, وہ ساری یو ایس اے میں ہوئی آئی ایم الیکٹریکل انجینئر بائی پروفیشن وتھ مائی ماسٹرز ان کنٹرول سسٹم اینڈ سافٹ ویئر مینجمنٹ آئی جوائنٹ کام سیٹس ان ٹو تھاؤزنڈ اینڈ نائن ایز این اسسٹنٹ پروفیسر بٹ ہیو آلویز بین ان دا فیلڈ آف پروجیکٹ مینجمنٹ ان کا جو ڈپارٹمنٹ ود ان دا ڈپارٹمنٹ دی ایریا آف پروجیکٹ مینجمنٹ اینڈ ہیو آلویز ٹاٹ دا گریجویٹ لیول I helped launch the MSPM program in 2010. This is when we started uh, or initiated the MSN project management program. Or Alhamdulillah uh, has since, since successfully controlled and executed all the administrative activities of this professional program. MSPM, jo on campus hum log offer karte, it's an evening program for working professionals. Typically uh, and ideally, project management education is for those individuals who are working during the day. And the way we train and teach this course is to make sure that what we teach in the evening can actually get implemented during the daytime. So what you learn today or tonight um, or for you anytime during the day is actually implementable in, an, in a state that you can actually go and use those tools and techniques at work the next day. Um, 
obviously uh, when you are dealing with working professionals who are not just full time students uski demands bhi thodi si different hain uh, it's a program the mspm program demands attention to details along with provision of up to date subject content and faculty proficiency in project management subject areas um shukar allah ka uh, we are at the stage where we not only are considered professionals in the field of imparting project management education but we can also guide and mentor professionals or the visiting faculty that are new to this area ek aur cheez bahut important hai ki while we are educating we need to ensure that there's a liaison with the industry also so there's a lot that goes on in the field of project management and educating professionals in the field of project management um i have continued to train and encourage my students and alumni jab aap chale bhi jate hain to obviously that connection stays with the, the professional faculty and the professionals that have come in to get that education and they continue and they pursue their post graduation into uh industry certifications pmp which is a pmi certification and then prince 2 which is more of a european certification uh my mentoring has contributed to motivate mspm students and alumni uh hum logo ke kafi students hain jo is waqt market mein actively working in it nha mein armed forces mein uh, army air force um, i do not recall anybody from the navy area but army mein aur air force mein hamara kafi strong uh, presence hai for of our graduates then we continue on telecommunication mein telenor hai ptcl hai huawei hai uh, isme hum logon ki bahut strong pre- we also had a ptv um, technical engineer who came in to get the pmp education or the you know i think he's pursuing pmp मगर एम पी एम डिग्री और मास्टर ऑफ प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट डिग्री लेके यहाँ से हमारे पास से गए हैं लेट्स टॉक अ लिटल बिट अबाउट द एक्सपीरियंस यू नो वॉट मोटिवेटेड मी टू बी हियर आई एम नॉट आई हैवन बिन अ प्रोफेशनल टीचर ऑल माई लाइफ प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट में एक और चीज़ बहुत अहमियत की हामिल है और वो ये है कि यू नीड टू हैव दैट कनेक्शन विद द इंडस्ट्री यू नीड टू हैव द हैंड्स ऑन एक्सपीरियंस विद प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट सो what did i do before joining comsats okay before coming to pakistan and joining comsats i worked as an ibm program manager or allah ne bahut badi opportunities di alhamdulillah i managed multi million dollar projects for basically in the automotive division of usa michigan being the hub of car industry it's called the world capital um of automotive engineering so uh having done my high school and my engineering from Michigan USA obviously the first choice was going into the the so called the car moguls um the Ford the General Motors magar i was working in Ford and General Motors as a HP consultant or an IBM consultant uh i have about 15 years of information technology experience uh, that is all my work experience prior to working as an assistant professor at comsats to business project management and manufacturing systems um jab hum baat karenge or jab when we'll proceed and progress you'll realize that there are many facets of project management and to be certified or to have proficiency in all aspects or all uh phases of project management also takes a lot of time and effort and experience so agar uski baat karte hain to from initiation and we are talking about the five phases or the of project management life cycle um we had to go through each phase and over the 15 years within the project management field of interest I gained experience in initiation, planning, execution, monitoring and control and also the closure phase. Jab hum uh progress karenge within our semester we will realize that closure of a project is if not more important is as important in a project life cycle than if you compare it to execution or monitoring and control aspect of the project. 
um, throughout the life as a project manager I have established excellent rel relationships with my clients my customers the vendors which we call the subcontractors and the project team members HR human resource management is an extremely important aspect of for a project manager and developing that relationship because dunya bahut choti hai aaj jinse hum relationship build karte hain years later they will come back and work for us or work with us and that is an important aspect again in project management i have consistently accomplished business goals through aggressive creative and result oriented business approaches combined with strong team motivational skills motivational skills conflicting resolution res conflict resolution ye sare kaam project manager ki zindagi mein waise hi hote hain jaise khana aur peena hota hai ya saans lena hota hai when you are in a project that is what you do you are motivating your team members to actually deliver and deliver and make sure that you are doing all things on time within budget on schedule ye jo cheeze hain main baat kar rahi hu we throughout the 16 weeks of the semester we will continuously talk about those aspects uh my teaching and mentoring experience prior to comsats include assignment as an ibm professional development manager managing and mentoring upwards of about 52 ibm employees mostly engineers with their career development plan including ibm project management certification so project management education is nothing new for me been there done that and loving every moment of it let's move on to what you will be seeing in your upcoming semester what you will receive as part of the content is the advanced project management module handbook hopefully inshallah you will receive all of the details within this module handbook that you will need from rules and regulation perspective it also has a very clear definition of what you will be expecting what kind of knowledge will be imparted over the next few weeks that you are with this semester within the semester what you will be experiencing okay table of contents this is just a preview of what i will be talking about consider that as an agenda for the next few minutes इंट्रोडक्शन टू प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजर मेरे अपने प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट मेरे अपने वर्ड्स में नहीं मगर दिस इज फ्राम अ पर्सन नेम फारूक हसन ही इज अ पी एम पी ट्रेनर एंड ही कंटिन्यूसली ऑफर्स पी एम आई ट्रेनिंग प्रेप कोर्सेज उनके वर्ड्स में अगर मैं डिस्क्राइब करूँ तो प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट इज यूनिवर्सली रिकग्नाइज एज वन ऑफ द बेस्ट मेथड्स टू इम्प्रूव द वर्किंग ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ग्रुप्स एंड इंडिविजुअल and helps them achieve their objectives in spite of the constraints of scope cost time quality and risk since organizations are always faced with scant resources and impossible deadlines project management forces managers to focus their attention on objectives improves efficiency and contributes to organizational success by enforcing time deadlines and cost budgets project management makes managers accountable for their action jo word accountable hai that has a lot of emphasis in our area responsibility ek cheez hai and accountability ek cheez hai feeling ownership of the constraints inhone to bahut sare constraint de diye magar jo triple constraints is a term used for three things which we all as project managers feel very bound to cost scope and time project management trains all managers to projectize their activities we'll talk about what does the word projectize mean i think agar hum log simple word mein kare to prioritize would be another term helping them uh, obviously the project manager set realistic objectives not only for themselves but also their organization establishing realistic milestones and motivating their teams to achieve those objectives motivation ke sath mai conflict resolution ka word bhi use karna chahungi because i think it is it has the same importance in the world of project management 
So while you're enrolled in this pro program, you would think, why me? Or agar aapne socha nahi hai, so let's focus on who should study project management. Not only it's this volcano erupting in the world right now where everybody is feeling the urge to go get themselves educated in the field of project management. I think it, the project management is a very diverse field. If I can use the word generalize for this education, um, I won't be wrong because the tasks or the use of project management affects each one of us in our daily life. Anyone who is directly or indirectly involved in initiation, planning, implementation, monitoring, evaluation, and or controlling a project. We come up with very diverse definitions of the word project. However, we'll get into the details later on. Anyone who is in a position which involves a substan substantive level of decision making, responsibility, communication, and coordination. Anyone and everyone should be thoroughly familiar with all the subject areas, methodology, processes, and tools and techniques of project management. By explaining who should study project management and by defining that area, we've actually included a vast majority of professionals that are in the field working in very, very diverse areas of interest. And that is the beauty of project management. A good and common project management knowledge platform will increase the likelihood of the project attaining its goal within time and budget. Koi bhi project manager, chahe experienced ho ya utna experience na ho, can never forecast a successful implementation of a project. The only thing that we can guarantee is using the best tools and techniques that are available in the market and that is the guarantee that we can give to our customers that we will use the best of the best that is available to increase the likelihood of your project attaining success. Project ke successful ya troubled ya failure hone ke multiple causes ho sakte hain. Aur phir mein repeat karungi ke koi project manager whether considered excellent in their field or with substantial experience cannot guarantee success of a project. However, what we can guarantee is implementing the best tools and techniques to somehow guide the project to a successful completion. Objectives for you within the framework of this class we would like to introduce our MSPM students to project management concepts. We will also talk a lot about how project management has evolved into strict professional discipline over the past three decades. It hasn't been that long. If you think about the life of project management, it is not that long ago. 30 years, maybe 40 years, not before that. We talk a lot about where we went and what we did. Project management, those who made Taj Mahal, they were also project managers. Our grandmothers who threw successful dinner parties within, a, within an allocated budget for serving dinner for a limited number of guests, they were also project managers. Yes, they were all project managers. However, there are very strict tools and techniques and processes that go along with documentation and implementation of several processes that go into the world of project management now. We would also encourage our students to share their professional PM experiences of how they're managing real life in project. Most of it is true when we are in an interactive session 
with project management professionals in a classroom environment. For our virtual uh, students, it would be wonderful to actually get some of that input via emails or via communication methods. What you will be receiving in the next 16 weeks, inshallah, is not just average introduction of project and then imparting just few tools and techniques and let you go. This content has been developed and scrutinized over a long period of time and is actually targeted to raise the bar of introductory PM education which are being offered in other programs and universities. We are targeting experienced project management professionals through this program. By conclusion of this program, inshallah, you will successfully hold a degree which tells you and weighs a lot. And inshallah, within the industry, we are respected for the kind of information and the quality of education within the field of project management. This course would also introduce MSPM students with the basic knowledge of PM processes. We will not start from imparting tools and techniques and start using terminologies which are rampant in the field of senior project managers. We will strive to start you off from the basic and gradually build up the level of expertise. However, the level of expertise because we are planning on starting from the basic definitions and taking you up in a very short span of time. Obviously, we will only be able to provide the basic knowledge of various project management concepts. It also, it will give you the what is and the how to implement it. The how to implement should be dealt in detail in other classes. I will use the procurement management for as, as an example. Within the few lectures, you can only understand the definitions of project procurement. The details of actually doing contract management, project contract management or project procurement management is itself a hopeful class that requires, again, almost a whole semester duration if you're going into the details of it. So within this class, Inshallah, you will get the basic what are these concepts? What are the project management knowledge areas? If you need to contact the module instructor, you can contact me through my email address ghazala underscore amin at comsats.edu.pk. Let's go down and talk about rationale, including aims. This module will give the program participants a comprehensive overview of the subject of project management from both a holistic as well as methodolog methodological perspective. Topics that we will be covering would include the origins and growing popularity of project management in not only private sector but also public sector organizations, the relevance of the project stakeholders, project organization paradigms, portfolios, and project selection models, project management methodologies, and some of the very important concepts that I've already talked about are your five project process groups, which constitute the project life cycle. The five being the project initiation, the planning, implementation, monitoring, evaluation and control, and then the last but not the least is your closure. As seen from the perspective of the Project Management Institute, nine defined project knowledge areas. PMI, Project Management Institute, has a very strong influence on what we see in the field of project management and also from the education aspect. We will talk a lot about PMIs and we also will talk a lot about PMIs influence 
in the corporate sector these days. Prerequisites of this course. There is no prerequisites as prescribed within the scheme of study. However, this is a foundation course, so no prior completion of coursework is mandatory for studying this course. However, if you are working actively on projects, you will find some of these terms and terminologies very close to your work environment. Work experience of leading or participation in project implementation and execution is necessary to gain maximum benefit from this class. Well, necessary is an interesting word because if you read a couple of books on project management, you'll start getting a flavor of what project management is all about. I would strongly suggest that as reading material, you should start reading some good project management book that are out there in the market. We will share with you some of the reference books that will be mandatory or compulsory as a read on material to successful or to gain maximum benefit out of this course. After studying this course, the participant should be able to understand project management methodologies, which are general introduction to basic project management methodologies practiced in industries and project organizations. Basic knowledge of various project management concepts obviously would be dealt with very, very frequently in the class. The overview of what is required to do two things in a project, effective and inf efficient implementation of projects. Project organization and integration. Different project organization structures and its implications in a projectized versus non-projectized environment. Some organizations deal with deal with their employees, deal with their tasks, deal with their project activities in a very structured manner. We tend to call them projectized industry. We'll, within some of the lectures, we will talk about what is projectized versus what is non-projectized. Project life cycle and interrelationships of various project phases. Understand a project manager's role in defining a project charter, creation of a work breakdown structure, and development of a project plan. One thing that I've already talked about are the project triple constraints. In defining project management, we tend to use triple constraints very frequently. The constraint word should not be used as a negative word. That's why I would like to use the word assets. Triple constraints is the scope, cost, and schedule. These are the limits, the limitations, or the boundaries that tie a project. However, I would like to call it the project assets. Scope, cost, and schedule, and adhering to those defined milestones are very close to a project manager's heart. Carnegie Mellon's project management concepts for CMMI with regards to project planning, initiation, execution, and monitoring processes. Project closure is also talked about and its related activities. Last but not the least, we're going to talk about understanding of all of project management knowledge areas. Major components and knowledge areas of project management. Again, we are using PMI as a master leading force in here. Their methodology and the nine are knowledge areas for project management. These would include project integration management, project scope management, project cost management, project time management, quality management, procurement management, risk management, project communication management and project risk and project human resource management. The last two are perhaps the most important of the nine knowledge areas and dealing with these no knowledge areas will tend to make you not only an effective
project manager but one of the better ones in the field of project management teaching methodology for you it is very important for me whether you are in my class and working with me face to face or you're attending one of my virtual courses it is very important for me that you learn something from this class and you are successful in this course the topic as well as the concepts will be discussed during the lecture during the semester you would be involved in the activities of learning and reading about the management theories their applications you will be doing you will be attempting quizzes you will be working on some of your presentations you will be preparing for your midterm and no student's life is complete without taking the final examination the assessment and evaluation of the students will be based on the below stated areas you will be reading and studying doing both along with looking through the lectures you will be interacting and improving upon your communication skills inshallah to understand various case studies you will be required not only to understand and complete your assignment on time but trying to understand why a certain assignment is given to you practical implementation and learning tools and techniques again is an important aspect of this particular course the assessment scheme it's a ms level course it's a graduate course your midterm examination will be held approximately after 8 weeks of the start of the semester which is 25% of the grade your quiz and assignment you will start receiving those after the second week the project methodology assignment probably after the 12 week the combination of all your quizzes your assignments and your presentations will constitute 25% of your grade your terminal examination or your final examination is 50% of the total grade good luck with all that let's talk about the importance of the reference material throughout the project i would like you to focus on purchasing or getting hold of an ebook for these few books that i have outlined obviously your study notes are an important aspect of this class the presentation that we will be going through a good book that will come in handy for this course and later on will be a guide to the project management body of knowledge which is pmis reference material the fourth edition is the latest edition that is in the market however pmi is coming up with the fifth edition the most important book here that i've that i've put together for you or ref is actually referring to is the dr herald kersner book project management a system approach to planning scheduling and controlling i think the latest edition that is out there in the market is the 10th edition the next two big books are wonderful reference material and would be a beautiful addition to your library or collection of books the wisdom of teams cats and bash and smith the seven habits of highly effective people by stephen r covey stephen r covey is no longer with us but he has left a wonderful and a great reading material for all of us within the field of project management he talks about organizational skills he gives us a systematic way of how to deal with not only projects but also our life we will talk a little bit about stephen covey and his ideas also course requirement and expectations a plus is greater than or equal to 90% A is 80 to 89 percent. B is 70 to 79 percent. C is 60 to 69 percent. 
and I would not like to discuss anything below that. Being prepared for class, student must go through the assigned reading before coming to the class. Reading through the previous lecture, reading through the reference material is considered a prerequisite to gain the maximum benefit out of this class. Quizzes and attendance are obviously for the students that are attending the lectures on campus. A little bit about academic dishonesty. It's an offense that will not be tolerated in any form. Plagiarism and cheating. Obviously, these are things that crosses the boundaries of our professional ethics. We are project managers and we tend to become wonderful project managers in our own fields. Professional ethic is a very important subject and inshallah there is no need for us to talk about that. Let's get down and talk about the module contents. What you will be experiencing, what you will be expecting in the next few weeks. I will only talk about the mandatory contents. There will be additional reading material, there will be additional lectures, hopefully and possibly within whatever is allowed to within the timelines but what I'm going to give you right now is the mandatory content every presentation will be dealt in up to two lectures if a lot time allows first one being the advanced project management we're calling it the introduction to project management we're going to talk about the project-oriented industries, project managers power and authority. We would like to talk about what kind of project manager are you. We would also like to talk about project management disciplines, which areas are good for project management implementation, which sectors are actually on the bottom list of project management or project-oriented industries stakeholder communication an important aspect for a project manager is to understand stakeholders who are they what are their needs assessing their needs identifying the gaps and actually delivering to make sure that gap is minimized between the project the project manager and the end users project manager are you a coach or a mentor? We'll talk about that. Last but not the least is again, a lot of emphasis will be placed on project closure. Understanding that project closure is as important as the initiation or the execution phase. Presentation number two, advanced project management, the project management processes. We'll talk about the framework and integration. We'll give you differences between a project and a program. We'll give you the storybook definition of what a project is all about. So, moving on naturally will be what is project management and then what is project portfolio. We'll talk about project management context. We all love to talk about project stakeholders. Who are they? Where are they and how do I identify them? And then sponsors. Who will help us reach our targets effectively and efficiently? We'll talk about performing organizations, project life cycle in phases, project management framework and integration. How to bring all of these processes together? Major project management standards. We'll talk about what are the standards that are out there in the industry right now. We talk about American standards. We talk about European standards. We talk about Middle Eastern standards. Well, who ties them all together? The methodologies, the conventional and the non-conventional ways of dealing with project management. And then the project management body of knowledge the PMI standards, the nine knowledge areas which divides 
the project management field into segments and then there's a world of knowledge world of information out there to be learned and dealt with the third presentation will be the project organization and integration project parameter we will talk about the goals the topics and the examples there are several organization structures we tend to put them into two distinct areas the projectized versus the non projectized within the projectized areas we will talk about the functional the matrix and the projectized matrix in between has the blend of functional industries and the projectized industries what we cannot talk enough about is the project manager role and responsibilities within this life cycle of project the pimbok area which is the project management body of knowledge the first knowledge area will be talked about in this particular slide in this particular group of presentations the integration management within the project integration management we will talk about project plan the charter and something called the wbs the work breakdown structure the fourth presentation is a, is a group of slides that you will benefit or you will enjoy the most the pm employment opportunities what is out there in the market we will talk about project management prof professional associations the literature that is out there in the market for you the project management training courses that are out there and the resources and generally we'll talk about the pm education industries educational institutions all of it that are out there trying to dip their fingers in the sea of information that is out there within project management the fifth presentation will be your project planning typically if we go with the project phases by this time you should have dealt with the project initiation phase and obviously the integration management knowledge area the second if i call it the most important i will not be wrong phase of the project is the project planning phase typically if you talk about a project life cycle and the time that a project manager spends in each of the phases about 60% of a project manager's time is spent in planning a project when we do not spend the 60% of the time planning you are actually exposing yourself to disruptions and issues within your project that is why it's so important to understand the importance of planning within this slide within the group of slides in this presentation we will also talk about cmmi versus the pmi because you tend to talk a lot about pmi or we tend to talk a lot about pmi and being a pmp certified engineer myself i want to ensure that you as students understand that all of it all methodologies are actually the same they are giving you the same concepts they are giving you the same education within the group of slides we will talk about project planning emphasis on when project planning is not done well what happens then your project planning goals and your project planning checkpoints these would be the milestones of your project planning phase the next one talks about one of the knowledge areas of project management as defined by pmi which is the project scope management one of the important criterias 
or one of the important triple constraints or triple assets that I would like to call them is the scope, understanding, documenting, and managing scope throughout the project life cycle. So PMBOK area is the scope management area. We will talk about project scope statement, how important it is. It can actually get you into a lot of legal issues and legal implications if you don't deal with project scope well. And the scope statement, it actually would define what the customer def expects out of you and what are you as a project manager expected to de deliver as a result of this project scope statement. Project scope phases. We'll talk about the scope definition, scope plan planning, scope verification, and last but not the least, scope control. Managing your scope throughout the life of the project. By this time, we will also talk about what is WBS, Work Breakdown Structure, how to effectively use it, how to develop it. It's not just a prioritizing tool, but it is actually an important role. It has a very important role in developing ownership and accountability of your project team. जिसको मैंने बहुत important area कहा था वो है project human resource management and that is my area of expertise like I said project management is the sea of information and no single person can actually claim to have expertise in all of the knowledge areas whoever says that I think needs to get a reality check project Human resource management, I consider that as my area of my expertise and the only reason why I says that, uh, say that, actually I shouldn't even call myself an expert because there's so much out there in the market and there's so much out there from education perspective is because my experiences as an IBM professional development manager, we learned and we were taught and trained to deal with the human aspect of managing a project. Having people stay motivated throughout the project life cycle is a very important task. How to ensure that they will continue to run at 110 kilometers an hour throughout the life cycle of the project while everything in the background within their own personal life is happening. And that is why dealing with human be beings is an important aspect that you need trained professionals to deal with those aspects with, even within a project. So what are human resources? We will talk about understanding human behavior and why is it so important for a project manager to deal with it. PMBOK area, we will deal with the project human resource management. We will talk about characteristics of a high performing team. Project manager skills, characteristics of good project managers. Who are good project managers? Interpersonal influences, how does, some of our persona how does some of our own personality traits make us a good or a better project manager? Or the lack of, again, we will discuss that. Hierarchy of human needs, Maslow's, if everyone has already uh, read or taken any of the management courses, I'm sure you are familiar with Maslow's hierarchy, we'll talk about that little triangle and how relevant that is in every aspect of our life. Project conflicts and its management. Moving on to the next two set of groups is your project cost management. We will talk about the parameter cost, examples of non-recurring and regularly recurring cost, we will talk about the important topics in project cost management. We will talk about the PMIs, which is Project Management Institutes, processes within the project management knowledge area of cost management. Resource planning, cost estimating, cost budgeting, and cost control. Cost estimating, we will also talk about analogous, parametric, and bottom-up estimating. 
The last one of the most important areas of project cost management is the earned value analysis. We will talk about the definitions and if time permits delve a little bit deeper into some of the important definitions and topics of earned value. It's one of the very important topics in project cost management area. Very, very important when we develop status reports and how to differentiate between how we were doing last week compared to how we're doing now. I think these are the important concepts that we can very effectively demonstrate by using earned value topics. Moving on from the HR management and how I put a lot of emphasis on the HR management or the human resource management in the life of a project manager, the next most important is the project communication management. I always ask this question and I always get a different response from people that I talk to and people that I deal with. Understanding uh, the question is how much time do you think a project manager spends communicating? And I get varied answers. I get percentages from 40 to about 90. Typically a project manager spends 90 to 95 percent of his or her time communicating. Communicating is not only verbal communication. It is written. It is our body language. It is then when we are resolving conflict. It is there when we are actually motivating resources. It is when, when we are producing a status report. It is there when we are actually presenting a status report. When we are talking to our sponsors, when, when we are talking to our team members, when we are talking to our contractors or our vendors or our subcontractors. So why communication? Pimbok area? very important knowledge area is the communications management. Communication management processes will be planning, information distribution, performance reporting, and administrative closure. Stakeholder management and communication. Stakeholder is a term that we will continuously and continually use throughout the life of this semester and throughout the project curricula. Communication channels the technology, communication skills, communication barriers, the macro and the micro. It's a very important concept that we need to understand the macro version of communication versus the micro version of communication. Why is it so important to have effective listening? The verbals and the non-verbals, our ethics, the cultural preferences, our body language, how to comfort people, how to tell people that we are not actually liking what we are hearing or seeing, or the kind of attitude that we display, the pessimistic or the optimistic. Communication styles, there are various communication styles that can be adapted. It's not only a trait that we are born with, it's actually an education that we learn and develop throughout our life cycle, throughout our own life, and we implement that, and we need to learn to implement that with precision during our project management tenure. Let's talk about the next group of presentations, is the execution and control. So if you talk about the five phases of the project, we've dealt with initiation and the planning. The next two groups are execution and control. Execution and control go hand in hand. While we are executing the tasks, we are actually monitoring and controlling and ensuring that that is the work that was expected out of us. Yes, you would be right if you argue that we are only spending one presentation on it. However, this is what time is permitting us to do. But this group of presentations or slides We'll talk about project execution and the monitoring and control aspect of it. When project monitoring and control is not done well, what are the issues that we face when we are not very stringent or rigid about controlling or monitoring aspects in a project life cycle? What are the project monitoring and control goals? And last but not the least, 
the project closure checkpoints. This would be the group where we will deal with the activities needed for project closure. We will give you tips and hints. We will actually try to give you a list of activities that are required to be done in every project closure, no matter what the complexity is, no matter what the size of the project is. Eleventh group of presentation will be the project quality management. When we talk about the triple constraints and when you define a project, you typically see a little triangle with three corners. The three corners are our three assets, the cost, the schedule, and the scope. Within it, you will see a continuous movement of quality. Project quality management has taken a center point along with customer relationship management in projects. So how did we get to this level from the 1960s to where we are today? Project quality management and total quality management are the talk of the town. We'll talk about the quality movement. We'll talk about what is quality, the definition of quality, and some of the misconceptions that are out there when dealing with quality. This particular PMBOK area is the project management knowledge area, the project quality management. The processes are quality planning, quality assurance performance, and quality control. The total quality management will talk about the project quality gurus, the Deming, the Durands, and the Crosbys. Why are they so important in our life? What did they do? What did they learn? And what did they impart to the corporate sector? They started from the world, the Americas, and they ended, most of them ended up in Japan. What did Japan learn from them? What transformation did they bring to the world? We will also talk about the Malcolm Bridge National Quality Award. We will talk about why are those so important. The ISO 9000 in the series. The cost of quality. We will talk about the conformance versus the non-conformance. The QA and QC tools and techniques. Some of it may be a little bit too um, relevant for people with a statistical background. However, within the manufacturing world, we need to understand these concepts. Yes, I would agree. Some of the QA and the QC tools and techniques that are adopted are f more relevant for the manufacturing world. But we will also give you some flavor of what kind of tools and techniques are adapted in the IT world. The last two most important, again I keep using the most important because I cannot get away from it. Each and every aspect of the project management knowledge area has its own importance and you cannot work without it. The project risk management, what is a risk? Why is it so important? What happens when we don't deal with a risk effectively? We'll talk about the project risk management. Why adopt risk management? The PMBOK area, the whole knowledge area, which is the project risk management, and their processes. Risk management planning, risk identification, qualitative risk analysis, and the quantitative risk analysis. The risk response planning, and risk monitoring and control. Project manager's role in managing a project risk. Very, very important role, a pivotal role in managing and identifying risks. And what is happening when risks do occur? The change of risks from just being a risk to an issue and then issue becoming a change in your project scope has its own implications. We will also talk about project risk reserves. 
the contingency reserve and the management reserve and we'll talk a little bit about it I don't think we'll be able to deal uh, with a lot of theor theoretical aspects of it because of time deadlines but we will talk about the percentages that are kept that are kept aside for contingency reserve or for management reserve project procurement management the 13th set of slides that are out there deals with the knowledge area of procurement and contract management in a project environment what is a contract management the purpose of a contract a project managers role in contract management the contract type and selection there are so many there are so many contract types that are out there the fixed price contracts the cost reimbursable contracts the time and material contracts and what are the risks associated with these contracts we will we would like to talk about statement of work the elements of a contract and there are so many terminologies that covers the world of project contract manager manage, management the difference or the different procurement cycles and the pro the, the procurement management processes from pmi standard we'll talk about this different processes and where they exist in a project life cycle and what phases of the project life cycle the purchases and acquisitions planning the contract planning the requesting seller responses the seller selection very important the contract administration and last but not the least is the contract closure the last group of selection from knowledge area perspective or the group of presentation that deals with a particular knowledge area is the project time management project parameter obviously is the time time being one of the triple constraints or one of the assets important topics will be discussed in project time management and then we will talk about the project time management processes activity definition your activity resource estimating activity duration estimating your schedule development and schedule control hopefully we will have time to delve into a little bit more detail with project network diagram and schedule management plan project time management will be the last group of presentation and this only gives you the mandatory knowledge areas or the mandatory course content that re is required to be covered under PRM 700 i wish you good luck and hopefully you will be able to get the most out of the group of content that we have selected very carefully for your education within the degree of ms in project management allow us